Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. I am your host, Francie, and today we have another electric episode lined up for you. And we're diving into the latest federal funding announcement that aims to revitalize the electric vehicle industry in America, specifically old shuttered and at-risk auto manufacturing facilities. $1.7 billion is being dedicated by the U.S. Department of Energy to projects to, like I said, revitalize, revamp shuttered or old at-risk auto manufacturing facilities into hubs for EV production, focusing on bringing jobs back to those areas and making sure that we remain a competitive force in the EV industry. Today, I'm going to talk about how this funding is distinct from other funding, who the recipients are, and what they will be using it for. All right. Let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Okay, folks, like I said, just recently, the U.S. Department of Energy announced a whopping $1.7 billion to support the conversion of 11 shuttered or at-risk auto manufacturing and assembly facilities across eight states, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Maryland, and Virginia. This move is part of the Biden administration's broader investing in America agenda. And this is a commitment to reinvest in and revitalize the manufacturing communities that have been the backbone of Americans' middle class, as is their goal. Of course, we know that the auto industry has gone through a long and complicated history of ups and downs, goods and bads. And this really directly affects the communities where this is their main economy, their main industry. So compared to the $2.4 billion that was allocated for the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, this new $1.7 billion of funding focuses more directly on converting existing facilities rather than building new ones. So this is going to leverage existing infrastructure and workforce, addressing perhaps past criticisms that early funding did not always reach the communities most in need and that, hey, we have some resources hanging out. Why don't we have some other specific uh, funding come in there so that we can use what already exists? So the U.S. Secretary of Energy, Jennifer M. Granholm, emphasized the importance of this initiative, stating that there is nothing harder to a manufacturing community than to lose jobs to foreign competition in a changing industry. Even as our competitors invest heavily in electric vehicles, these grants ensure that our automotive industry stays competitive. I would argue that it needs to be more competitive and does it in the communities with the workforce that have supported the auto industry for generations. Good paying jobs, good union jobs, that's the goal. And also pushing forward this green electric technology because whether or not, um, like wherever you fall on this discussion, I think something that we should all be able to agree on, be able to agree on is that the competition um, the competitive advantage in the US needs to be stronger in terms of the electric vehicle industry there are other countries nations industries communities markets that are doing uh, far better with battery and EV manufacturing so far so to fully appreciate the significance of this latest announcement I do want to take a moment to reflect on the history of federal funding for electric vehicles Federal support for EVs is nothing new. It has evolved over the years, though, certainly, to address the changing needs of the industry and the urgency as well of the climate crisis. One major milestone was the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 that I mentioned earlier. This was $2.4 billion for EV and battery manufacturing projects. So this was supposed to jumpstart the EV market and basically uh, fund projects that would create jobs, but also reduce dependency on foreign oil and decrease greenhouse gas emissions. So this helped lay the foundation for the modern EV market in the U.S. by supporting this early stage technology and infrastructure developments. Now let's discuss the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, NEVI program. This is very distinct as well from both the previous 
funding that I mentioned and this $1.7 billion that we're talking about today. So this differs because the NEVI program aims to install 500,000 chargers across the country by 2030 so that drivers can easily find charging stations among major highways and cities. This is a part of the, this was established under the bipartisan infrastructure law and it focuses on the national network of EV chargers to support, like I said, this long distance travel. So this is in contrast to the recent $1.7 billion of funding from the Department of Energy directed towards the conversion of existing auto manufacturing facilities to produce electric vehicles and their components. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now these are all very different. Uh, while NEVI addresses the infrastructure needed for widespread EV adoption, the Domestic Manufacturing Auto Conversion Grants Program, that is this program we're talking about today, focuses on boosting the manufacturing capabilities necessary to meet the growing demands of electric vehicles. So let's get back to this, the specifics of this $1.7 billion of funding. So this funding will be used to convert 11 facilities to manufacture a range of products in the EV supply chain. These include battery parts for electric motorcycles, school buses, hybrid powertrains, heavy duty commercial truck batteries, and electric SUVs. This is part of, like I said, this domestic manufacturing auto conversion grants, which is funded by the Inflation Reduction Act. So the goal is to expand manufacturing of light, medium, and heavy duty electrified vehicle and vehicles and their components. The program aligns with a lot of what the Biden administration has been doing so far. And it not only supports climate goals, but climate goals, but also is trying to benefit the communities that have been historically marginalized by underinvestment and overburdened by pollution. As we look into the future, this latest funding announcement marks a pretty big step into this kind of strategy of taking what exists and revamping it for the electric automotive industry. So let's take a closer look at the recipients of this funding. If we look here, we can see, uh, and I'll have all these links in the show notes, of course, but we can see the recipients of this grant, these grants, 1.7 billion dollars. If you see the map here, you can see it all. These are all really on the east side of America. So I do want to note that while these awards have been given out, they technically could be negotiated, they could be rescinded. So nothing is really final until uh, everything has been finally negotiated and agreed upon. And then uh, but this is the proposed awards that these recipients have been have been awarded. Okay, so if we look here, we can see the list of the nine uh, entries, the nine recipients. We'll start with American Auto Parts, Inc., aka Mobis North America. So they have the plug-in hybrid EV conversion and MUSE battery system assembly plant construction revitalization in Toledo, Ohio, and they are getting thirty over $32 million uh, of the cost share of this federal funding. Bluebird Body Company, the Bluebird Bus Electric Vehicle Manufacturing Conversion Project in Fort Valley, Georgia, is getting nearly 80 million thousand, 80 million thousand, no, just 80 million dollars uh, of this funding. Cummins Electrified Power North America is accelerating the shift to zero. They are charting a path for workforce transition and community improvement towards a zero emissions economy. That is the description of the title of their project that is getting this funding in Columbus, Indiana, over 75, no, $75 million towards their project. Fiat Chrysler Automotive US LLC is getting funding in two different areas. One is in Belvedere, Illinois, for the conversion of Belvedere assembly plant to a vehicle assembly complex for electrification. They're getting 300, over $334 million. And then their Kokomo, Indiana, Indiana plant is uh, the U.S. conversion of Indiana transmission plants for electric drive modules, they're getting nearly $250 million. General Motors, of course, is getting funding for EV conversion in Lansing, Michigan, $500 million. Harley-Davidson, those electric motorcycles, their EV conversion in York, Pennsylvania is getting $89 million. Volvo Technology of America, um, a manufacturing conversion of commercial trucks from fossil fuel to zero emissions for Volvo Group's Mac and Volvo brands in Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Maryland for a grand total of over $208 million. And finally, ZF North America Inc. for their e-mobility conversion in Marysville, Michigan is getting 157 
million dollars towards their grant tank grants with this funding for convert converting whatever they have into something for more electrified goals so those are the recipients like i said technically it could change but right now those are the nine recipients and their projects so we can look into those more later but like i said it's it's these awards we're going to see what comes next of course, that is a ton of money. And I would love to know if any of y'all have any sort of connections to these plants. Do you live nearby? Do you remember when the plant was up and running and what it did? How do you feel about this? I want to know. I want to know in the comments below. I do want to also note that, yeah, this is cool. We're taking what exists. We're electrifying it. But also lately, we have, of course, heard that there have been delays and in, in, in divestments and 2024 from a few automakers that have really adjusted their EV production plans. And those specifics can vary. Typically, they're citing supply chain issues, production delays, uh, market, basically the market feedback, uh, but they're not always super clear. But we've heard things from Ford, General Motors, Stellantis, Nissan, and even Porsche about facing delays in ramping production and working with the market. Although it is very clear the EV market is not decreasing. EV adoption and EV sales are continuously increasing year over year. So any headline that says the opposite is honestly, I don't know. It's just not reading the data and the data is very clear. Okay. So to wrap up, I'd like to remind you all that this program is just one part of a broader effort to reshape the American auto industry. It's job focused, but it's also technology focused and focusing on our competitiveness in the global market. As always, I will continue to follow these developments closely and keep you informed on how they impact the EV landscape at large, how they impact the final user, and what the automakers are up to with all this money. So thank you for tuning in to the Out of Spec podcast. If you enjoyed today's discussion, if you know about anything that I talked about today, any of these locations, please let me know and be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on wherever you listen to your podcast. If you are just tuning in with your ears, if you're tuning in with the eyeballs, also, you know, like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us, uh, follow us on social media as well. Anything out of spec, really, to keep up with all things electric vehicles. Until next time, this is Francie signing off. Drive safely. Stay charged. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.